Here we're going to look at a solution to a problem from the 2008 Canadian Mathematical Olympiad. This is question two, and it's a nice problem which deals with a functional equation. So let's look at the statement. So we want to determine all functions whose domain are the rational numbers and range are the rational numbers, such that for all inputs x and y from the rational numbers, we have f evaluated at 2 times f of x plus f of y is equal to 2x plus y. Okay, so let's look at some hints before we look at our solution. So maybe the first hint really goes for all types of these functional equations, and that is pick some special values of x and y that might create a simpler functional equation that you can work with. So in other words, like try x equals y, try both of them equal to zero, or try one of them equal to zero and the other one equal to still being a free variable, and see what functional equation you get out of each of those choices. Now the second hint um, is also pretty common when it comes to these functional equation type problems, and that is you usually only very simple functions satisfy these conditions over here. Um, and in that case, you can usually guess a very, very simple solution um, to one of these problems and then work towards that guess. In other words, wor work towards showing that this guess that you've made is really the only type of function that satisfies um, whatever functional equation is given. Okay, so I urge you guys to pause the video, try this problem with these hints, and then we'll look at a solution. Hopefully you were able to make good headway on the problem using those hints. Now let's go ahead and look at a full solution. And so we're going to use that first hint. In other words, pick some special values of x and y, which will create a simpler functional equation. And we're going to do this a few different times. The first time we're going to set x equal to y equal to 0 and see what happens in this functional equation. So notice that's going to give us f evaluated at 2f of 0 plus f of 0. So that's what we get on the left hand side equals 2 times 0 plus 0. So that's equal to 0 on the right hand side. OK, but notice that simplifies this left hand side really easily. We get f of 3 evaluated at f of 0 equals 0. Now we're going to take advantage of this fact that we just derived by um, setting x equal to y equal to 3 evaluated at f of 0, plugging that back into the functional equation and seeing what we get. Okay, so let's see what we get on the left hand side. So we get f evaluated at 2 um, times f evaluated at x, but notice x is equal to 3f of 0 in this case. And then we have plus f evaluated at y, but this is again 3f evaluated at 0. Great. And then that's the whole left-hand side. Now let's see what we get on the right-hand side. So we're going to get 2 times x, but x is 3 times f of 0. So that's going to give us 6 times f of 0 plus y, but again y is 3 times f of 0. So we get 3 times f of 0. So in other words, we get 9 times f of 0. Okay, so now let's see if we can simplify this at all. So we know from this equation up here that if we evaluate f at 3 times f of 0, we get 0. So in other words, all of this right here is equal to 0, and all of this right here is equal to 0. But notice that simplifies the inside of this function to f of 2 times 0 plus 0, but that's just 0. So we get f of 0 equals 9 times f of 0. But now the only number that's 9 times itself is 0. So that tells us immediately that f of 0 equals 0. And that's maybe a good place to end this board. Um, we have this really important fact that f of 0 equals 0. I'll go ahead and bring that to the top and we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so on the last board, we figured out that f evaluated at 0 was 0. And now what we're going to do is let one of the variables remain free and the other variable equal to 0 one at a time in order to construct some more functional equations based off of this functional equation. So maybe let's first start off by setting x equal to 0, and then we'll let y remain free. So let's see what that gives us. That's going to give us f evaluated at 2 times f of 0 plus f of y equals um, 2 times 0 plus y. 
So that's pretty clear. But notice we know f of zero is equal to zero. So this interior collapses just to f of y. So in other words, we have f of f of y equals y. Great. But notice that that means that f equals f inverse. We've composed f with itself and gotten the identity function, but that means that f is its own inverse, which also implies that f is bijective. In other words, it's one to one and onto. So that's an important thing to notice. Okay, great. So now the next thing that we're gonna do is, since we've got this double composition of f leading to the identity function, we can use that to our advantage by taking our given functional equation and applying f to it. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's just write down this given functional equation. So we have f of two times f of x plus f of y equals two x plus y. So again, that's given. So now let's go ahead and apply f to both sides of this equation. So notice here we have f composed with itself. And so that means we're just gonna be left with whatever's inside the inner composition of f. In other words, we have two times f of x plus f of y equals f of two x plus y. Again, that's just from the right-hand side. Now we're gonna stop at this step for now. And then over here on the right hand side, we're going to do the opposite. In other words, we're going to let x be free and then we're going to let y be zero. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll set x equal to a free variable. In other words, it's going to remain kind of anything and we'll let y equal zero. Again, back into the functional equation. So that's going to be f evaluated at two times f of x plus f of zero equals two x plus zero. Great. So let's see what we get there. So we know f of zero is zero. So we have f evaluated at two f of x equals two x. Great. Now we're gonna use this fact that we arrived at in the left-hand side of the board and apply f to both sides of this equation. So if we apply f to the left-hand side of the equation, we have f of f of 2f of x. And then to the right-hand side of the equation, we have f of 2x. But again, we know f is its own inverse. So that gives us 2f of x equals f of 2x. Great. So now let's kind of hang on to that as well. Now, the next thing that we want to do is put this purple box and this blue box together and see what we get out of that. So I'll just say blue box plus purple box tells us that f of 2x plus y, on the one hand, it equals 2 times f of x plus f of y. But on the other hand, 2 times f of x is f of 2x. So this equals f of 2x plus f of y. Great. And that may not seem extremely important, but it is extremely important because every rational number can be written as two times another rational number. So this two times x can really play the role of any rational number. So in other words, at this point, we know that for all rational numbers, r and s, um, f of r plus s equals f of r plus f of s. And you might say, well, that doesn't look like exactly what we have, but we can make it look like that just by writing r equals 2x for x in the rational numbers. And that's always possible. Anytime you've got a rational number, you can write it as twice another rational number, but that gives us essentially the same equation right here. Okay, so now this is the next important property that we have. I'll go ahead and bring that to the top and we'll move on. Up to this point, we've determined three very important properties of our function. First of all, we know that if we evaluate this function at zero, we get zero. Second of all, we know that this function uh, obeys this um, property that f of r plus s equals f of r plus f of s, and that's true for all rational numbers. And finally, we know that 
f is its own inverse. In other words, applying f to itself, we get the identity function, which is just x. Great, and now you might wanna think through the catalog of simple functions in your head and think about the ones that might satisfy these properties. And I think what you'll come up with is this has to be a linear function. And that's exactly what we're going to claim and prove. And so we'll prove that f of x equals a times x for some a, which is a rational number. Great, okay, so now let's see how this proof will go. So we will prove this in a couple of stages. We will prove this for um, natural numbers, really non-negative integers. And then next we'll prove this for positive rational numbers and then all rational numbers. So let's go ahead and suppose that n is a natural number. And then notice that we have f of n equals f of one plus one n times. But by this property up here where f of r plus s is f of r plus f of s, we know that that's gonna give us f of one plus f of one. Again, this is all happening n times. And so that's gonna give us n times f of one. Great. So actually, it looks like this sum a, which is a rational number, might just be the value of f at 1. Okay, so now the next thing that we want to do is um, look at what if we have a positive rational number. So let's go ahead and take p and q, which is a rational number and it's positive. Okay, so let's see what we get for this. So we'll have f of p over q. So that's gonna be equal to f of one over q plus one over q. And then that is all happening p times. But then by our property up there that we've been using, we have that this is equal to f of one over q um, plus f of one over q. And again, all of that is happening p times. And so we can write this as p times f of one over q. Now that may not seem super helpful, but the next thing to notice is that we can write this as p over q times q times f of one over q. Great. So again, we've just kind of multiplied and divided by q. In other words, we've multiplied by one, but then we're gonna expand this guy out into a sum of f of one over q, q times. So here we have, this is p over q times f of one over q plus f of one over q. And like I said, this is all happening q times. Great. But now we can mash that back together and we're gonna have P over Q times F of one over Q added to itself Q times. But we know exactly what one over Q added to itself Q times is. It's one, so we get P over Q times F of one. So let's see what we've got. We've shown that if we've got a non-negative integer, then the function behaves in this manner where a is equal to f of one. Then we showed if we have a positive rational number, the function behaves in this manner, again, where a is equal to f of one. So now we need to just show that if we have a negative rational number, we're still okay. So I'll like erase this and we'll do that. Okay, so now we're ready to work with a negative rational number. So let's go ahead and suppose that x is a positive rational number, but what that means is negative x is a negative rational number, which I'll just denote by q upper minus. But now notice that that means that x plus negative x equals zero, kind of obviously, but we can apply f to both sides of this and we'll get f of x plus negative x equals f of zero. But again, f of zero is equal to zero by a previous calculation. But now we can go ahead and use this property up here on this term f of x plus negative x to write this as f of x plus f of negative x equals zero. So in other words, we have f of negative x equals um, negative f of x. But then on the last board, we showed that if we have a positive rational number, f of x is equal to f of one times x. So if we include the minus sign in here, we have this is minus f of one times x. Great.
So in other words, this claim is satisfied with a equal f of 1. Great. So now we can actually finish this off very quickly using this property right here, which we haven't used in a bit, and that is f evaluated at f of x is equal to x. So notice if we set f of x equal a times x, then that means f evaluated at f of x is equal to a squared times x. So that's pretty easy to check, but we want that to be equal to x. And this should be true for all x. And so what that tells us is that a squared has to be equal to one, but that tells us that a equals plus or minus one. And so that means that the only two possibilities are f of x equals x and f of x equals negative x. But we're not quite done. We have to argue that those two possibilities still satisfy the original functional equation, but that's pretty easy to do. So I'll leave it to you guys to check that. So that's a good place to stop.